Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in quantitative aspects of chemical change. You might think of it as stoichiometry. Um, so in this lesson, we got as far as this question here, and basically what we're going to be doing is going through a whole bunch of old exam paper questions to make sure that you guys know how to do your stoichiometry. The reason stoichiometry is so important, um, as I've mentioned to you before, is that even though there's not a specific section on stoichiometry in the final exams um, in grade 12, I do find that what happens is they kind of sneaky and they include it in the acids and bases section and in the chemical equilibrium section. So it is pretty important that you know how to do your stoichiometry. So let's go through this. The chemist now dissolves 0.85. Okay, so we did this question on the aluminium sulfate plus sodium hydroxide, which gives us aluminium hydroxide and sodium sulfate. And then we did some questions on it. But now we've got a new question. It says the chemist now dissolves 0.85 moles of the sodium sulfate in a 250 cubic centimeters of distilled water. He then tops it up with enough distilled water to make a one liter solution. Didn't find in words the term concentration of a solution. So concentration of solution is obviously the um, number of moles. Okay, think of it this way, concentration is equal to the number of moles over volume. So the concentration of a solution is basically the number of individual particles per unit volume or the number of moles per unit volume. Right, so now it says calculate the concentration of the sodium sulfate solution. So it's kind of a sneaky question and the reason it's a sneaky question is because they think that you're going to get confused because of the fact that they are saying that once you've made your solution, okay, you then use distilled water to make it up to one litre solution. What they don't realise is that once you've got your concentration, adding extra distilled water doesn't change your concentration at all because what is happening is that you are actually effectively adding the same thing as adding a noble gas into the container. So what happens is it doesn't affect the concentration at all. So concentration is number of moles over volume. We know the number of moles. It is 0.85, but the volume cannot be in 250 cubic centimeters. It has to be in decimeters cubed. So therefore, what we need to do is we need to change this 250 cubic centimeters into decimeters cubed, and we do that by dividing by a thousand. So that becomes 0.25. Now all we need to do is get out a calculator, and I'm sorry, I forgot to get my calculator out. So I'm just going to first hide this that's out the way, because otherwise it'll be confusing for us. And then I'm going to get out my, there we go, calculator. And there we go. Any minute now. Pop, there we go. So it is 0 0.85, no, let's try again. 85 divided by 0 0.25 equals that doesn't help at all, 3.4. So the concentration is 3,4 moles per decimeter cubed. There you go, moles per decimeter cubed. Right, that was quite a nice question. Let's do the next question. It says, a learner wants to determine the molecular formula of a compound found in cigarettes. The learner asks for your help with the calculation. The following is known about the substance. It is responsible for cigarettes being such an addictive substance. It is a molecular mass of 162.2 grams per mole. 
and its percentage combination composition is uh, 74,07%. Then it's 8.65% hydrogen and 17.28% nitrogen. And obviously the 74.07% was carbon. It says name the compound being referred to. Well, it's obviously nicotine because nicotine is the substance that makes cigarettes so addictive. Do you agree? Right, now what it says is as much as the substance referred to in question 5.1 is responsible for the addiction of smokers, it is used in some products to help them overcome the addiction. Name one such example of such a product. Okay, well this is just silly because this is not something that you can study for, but it would be any of your nicotine patches or your nicotine gum that you can use. Now it says cigarette packs contain various warnings on them concerning the harm. Of, okay, never mind that. One harmful effect of smoking on humans is that you die younger because you get cancer from smoking, lung cancer. Now it says, show by means of calculation. Finally, some science. Show by means of calculation how you would go about helping the learner determine the molecular formula of the compound. Okay, so first of all, we can use the percentage composition to work out the basic ratio, the empirical formula, the basic ratio of the carbons, hydrogens, and nitrogens to it, right? So let's do that. We've got carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. If we assume that we've got 100 grams of it, then do you agree that 74,07 would be grams, would be made of grams? 8,65 would be the hydrogen, and 17,28 would be the nitrogen. Okay, so then what we need to do is we need to divide it by the molar masses to get the number of moles of this, so we can get the mole ratio. So we're going to divide this by 12, this by 1, and the molar mass of nitrogen is 14. Right, so obviously this stays at 8,65. That's nice and easy. Let's look at how we divide carbon. Carbon is 74,07. No, let's just delete. Delete. 0 0.07. Divided by 12 equals, that's not help at all, 6.17. So that's going to be 6, oh my word, hang on. Let's go back to a pen, shall we? 6, 17. And this one here is 17.18. Divided by 14 equals 1.23. So this is 1. Oh, I just keep doing this, okay? Hmm. This is 1,23. Right, so that's the mole ratio. The mole ratio at the moment is that we're using 1.23 moles of nitrogen to 8.65 moles of hydrogen to 6.17 moles of carbon. But do you agree that's not very useful to us at all? Not at all. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide this by the smallest number to get a mole ratio that goes one to something. Okay, so we're going to divide this by 1, 2, 3. That's obviously going to be 1. We're going to divide this by 1, 2, 3. And we're going to divide this by 1.23 because then we're going to have a mole ratio of 1 to something to something. Okay, so let us do that now. So we got 6.17 divided by 1.23 equals, that doesn't help, 5.02. So this is, oh, that's making me mad that it changes to it. So this is 5,02. Let's do this one. That is 8.65 
divided by 1.23 equals, and that's 7.03. Um, and it changes immediately, it's weird. So that's 7 comma 03. So do you agree that using, forgetting about the rounding errors, we've got 5 to 7 to 1. So we can write that as C5 H7 1N. And that is the empirical formula. This is the empirical formula. This means that this is the basic ratio of carbons to hydrogens to nitrogen. We don't know what the actual formula is, but we can work it out. This here is the molecular mass of it, okay, of the actual formula. So what we're going to do now is use this empirical formula and see if we can calculate the, what this comes to, how much this comes to. So do you agree that it's going to be 5 times 12, because there's 5 carbons, plus 7 times 1, because there's 7 hydrogens, plus just 114 for the nitrogen. So that is going to be 60 plus 7 plus 14. So that becomes 21, so that's 81 grams. So this comes to 81 grams. But the molecular mass is 162.2. So do you agree that the molecular mass is approximately two times our mass of our empirical formula. So therefore we can say, well, the molecular formula therefore has to be C10, H14, oh, I don't know what's going on here, N2, C10, H14, N2. Okay, not too bad, hey. Right, let's do the next question. So the next question says, a chemical reaction for the production of the drug aspirin from two compounds X and Y is represented in the balanced equation. So we've got X, compound X, which is C7H6O3, plus compound Y, which is C4H6O3, gives us aspirin, which is C9H8O, plus some water, O4 plus. It says the chemist reacts 14 grams of compound X with 10 grams of compound Y. And the first thing it says, define the term limiting reagent. So grade 11s, as I've stipulated several times with you guys before, the most important thing that you need to do is make sure that you've learned all the definitions from the textbook, okay? All the definitions. So now what we are going to do is we are going to just tell you what the understanding of the limiting reactant is, which is that it is the reactant that is used up first. It is the reactant that's used up first and it controls how much um, product is made. Okay, it controls how much product is made. Right, so now let's look. It says perform the necessary calculations to determine which of the compounds X or Y is the limiting reactant. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to work out the number of moles that we're given of each. So to do that, we need the molar mass. So we're going to first find out the molar mass of X. So that is made up of seven carbons plus six hydrogens plus three oxygens. So it's going to be seven times 12 plus six times one plus three times 16. Okay, so now if we look at that, we can see that that is seven times 12 is 84 plus six, plus six, three, six, three, three times 16 is 48, which is going to be 90 plus 48, which is 138 grams per mole, 138 grams per mole. So now we, need, we can work out the number of moles. So the number of moles of X is mass over the molar mass, 
which is 14 divided by 138, which is going to be what? Let's work it out. It's 14 divided by 138 equals, and press the SD button, 0 0.101. So it's 0 0.1. So it's not, oh gosh, I hate when it does that. Let's go back. 0, 0,1 moles. Okay, so we've got 0, 0,1 moles of X, okay? Now, let's do the same thing, but let's do it for Y. Let's do exactly the same thing, but now we need to do it for Y. Because we have to compare the number of moles given versus the number of moles in our calculation. So we're going to do Y. And Y is made up of four carbons plus six hydrogens plus three oxygens again. So this is 12 plus times by four plus six times by one plus three times by 16. Four twelves are 48 plus six plus 48. So that is 96 plus 6, which is 112, 112 grams per mole. So therefore, the number of moles, again, is the mass, which is 10, divided by the molar mass of 112. So let's get that out. So it's going to be 10 divided by 112 is going to be... 0, 0,09. So this is 0, 0,09 moles. Okay, so now let's have a look at this. The ratio is 2 of x needs 1 of y. Okay, so in other words, if I've got 1 mole of y, I need double the amount of x. Okay, do you agree? Um, so, if we look at this, this 0 0.09, 0, 0, 0.09, if I multiply it by 2, do you agree that that gives me 0 0.18, which is more than what I've got? So, therefore, Y is not my limiting reagent, X is my limiting reagent, because what's going to happen, no, hang on, am I wrong? Okay, you know, I'm, I'm right. X is my limiting reagent because for every 0, 0,1 moles of X, I only need 0, 0, 0,05 moles of Y. So once I've used up X, okay, I'll still have some Y left over. So therefore, my limiting reagent is X. Okay, compound X is my limiting reagent. Now it says, now it says, and I don't want to erase everything because I need some of this. I don't know what's going on here. It's just slow today. Right, now it says the actual mass of aspirin obtained is 11.5 grams. Calculate the percentage yield of the aspirin. Okay, so what we need to do is work out theoretically what we should have got if we use up all our 0 0.1 moles of X. So that's what we need to do first. We need to look at the number of moles that we've got, how many we used up, how many should have been used up. So do you agree that this is our limiting reagent? So now we need to use that to see how many grams of aspirin should have been formed. Okay, so the theory goes that two moles of C of, okay, we'll call it X, gives us two moles of aspirin. Okay, but we don't have two moles. We've got 0, 0,1 moles. So 0, 0.1 moles of the aspirin should give you 0, 0,1 moles. I mean, of X, give me 0, 0,1 moles of the aspirin. Okay, right. So we now know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. The number of moles is 0, 0,1. The molar mass we need to work out. So let's do that. We've got nine carbons plus eight hydrogens plus four oxygens. So nine times by 12 plus eight plus 
4 times by 16. Okay, so now let's go through this. 9 times 12 is 108. 9, 10, 90, yeah, 108. Plus 8 plus 4 sixes are 24, carry to 64. So that becomes 116 plus 64 which is four and six that becomes 180 grams per mole. So therefore we can work out the mass. We can go naught comma one times by 180 is equal to the mass, which is obviously going to be 18 grams. So therefore theoretically we should have got out 18 grams, but we only got out 11.5. Therefore, our percentage yield is going to be 11,5 divided by 18 times by 100 over 1 because it's always a percent. So we've got 11.5 divided by 18, 18 equals multiplied by 100 equals, oh no, it's done that stupid thing. Okay, so it's 11.5 divided by 18 equals. So do you read this 0.64? So it's 0, oh. <laughs> So that is 0, 0,64 multiplied by 100 which is going to give me 64%, which isn't a bad percentage yield, but it isn't the best either. Not a bad percentage yield at all. Okay, next question. It says, stomach acid is hydrochloric acid and it has a pH of about two. Okay. Sometimes our stomachs produce too much acid and this can cause heartburn. Calcium carbonate is available as an antacid today, a tablet used to neutralize stomach acid. Um, knowing that one of the products is carbon dioxide, write about its equations for neutralization reaction. Okay, so we know that we've got HCl. And we are reacting it to calcium carbonate. So they've been nice and told us that one of our products is carbon dioxide. But what you guys should know is that acid and a carbonate from the salt plus carbon dioxide plus water. Whereas normally an acid in the base just forms salt and water. So if it forms carbon dioxide and it forms water, do you agree that the the salt left is calcium chloride. The salt left is calcium chloride. Okay, so now we need to balance. So there's two chlorines here, so I'm going to put a two here. Right, let's have a look at it. One calcium, one calcium, two chlorines, two chlorines, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygens, two and one is three, and two hydrogens done. So this is the acid and this is the base. Now on your formula sheets, you will find a formula that says, and we have covered it in the notes, I mean in these lessons, it says that CAVA over CBVB is equal to NA over ND. Okay. So normally we would use this, okay? Normally we'd use this, but now it is a bit different because now they've said how much HCl in milligrams can be neutralized by 500 milligram tablet. Okay, so what are we looking at? It says how many milligrams of HCl can be neutralized by a 500 milligram. So we're not looking at concentration and volume, we're looking at a normal basic stoichiometric question where they're telling us that the mass that they're giving of the calcium carbonate is 500 milligrams and they want to know 
how much are we going to, if we use up all of this, how much of this can we get rid of? Okay, so what we need to do first of all is convert this into moles. So we know that number of moles is mass over the molar mass. First off, this is 500 milligrams and the mass has to be in grams, right? So do you agree that this becomes 0,5 grams? 500 milligrams is the same as 0,5 grams because we divide by 1,000. Then we now have to work out the molar mass of calcium carbonate. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our periodic table and find the molar mass of calcium carbonate, which is going to be calcium, which is 40, plus carbon, which is 12, plus 3 times by 16, which is going to be 52 plus 48, which is going to be 100. So that's 100 over there. So now what we need to do is take 0 0.5 and divide it by 100 and we get 0, 0, 0, 0.5. So this is... Breathe, Candice. This is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0.5 moles. Okay, so that is 0, 0, 0, 0.5 moles. Now, the ratio of this is 1 to 2. So that means that we are going to make, or we're going to be able to use up 2 times by 0, 0, 0, 0.5 moles of hydrochloric acid, which becomes 0, 0, 0, 0.01 moles. 0.01 moles, okay? So now what we need to do is we now need to say, okay, fine. Well, if that's the case, we now need to work out the, mo the mass. So again, we got number of moles is mass over the molar mass. Therefore, the mass is going to be the number of moles times by the molar mass. The molar mass of HCl is 1 plus 35 comma 4. Five, sorry, that's a four five, which is thirty, uh, which is thirty six, comma four five. I don't know what the problem is today. So therefore, the mass is going to be naught comma naught one times by thirty six comma four five. So if we get out our calculators. We can see that's 0 0.01 multiplied by 36.45, delete, delete, 45, delete, 45 equals 0, 0,3645. Okay, so that is. 0, 0,3645 grams, but they want the answer in milligrams. Grade 11, you have to read this properly. So we're going to times this by a thousand to get to milligrams, and we end up with 364,5 milligrams. Right. So in other words, 500 milligrams of calcium carbonate can neutralize 364,5 milligrams of hydrochloric acid. Hmm, nice question. Right, now we're going to move on and learn a little bit more or work a little bit through volume relationships in gaseous reactions. So there are different types of reactions that we can get, and one of the types of reactions is an explosion. It says ammonium nitrate is used as an explosive in mining. The following reaction occurs when ammonium nitrate is heated. So you've got ammonium nitrate when heated, it's a solid, breaks up into nitrogen, which is a gas, water, so it's obviously water vapor or steam, which is a gas, and oxygen as a gas. It says if 750 grams of this stuff, 750 grams of ammonium nitrate is used, 
what volume of oxygen gas, what volume of oxygen gas would we expect to produce at STP? So here's the hint, okay? The volume of one mole of any gas at STP equals 22,4 decimeters cubed, right? So if I work out from this, the number of moles of oxygen I'm getting, then obviously I can then work out the volume. Okay, because that's what they want. They want the volume. So let's do that now. So the first thing we need to do is work out the number of moles that are actually used. So we know that number of moles is mass over molar mass. We have the mass at 750 grams. We need to work out the molar mass. Let's work out the molar mass of NH4NO3. Okay, so do you agree that that is going to be the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14, plus 4 times hydrogen, which is 1, plus another 14 for the next nitrogen, plus 3 times 16 for the oxygen, okay? So that's 14, actually 14 and 14 is 28, plus 4 is 32. So that's 32 plus 48, which becomes 80 grams per mole. So therefore we can say that the number of moles that we were actually given was 750 divided by 80, or 75 divided by 8, which is 9.375, so it's 9.38. So that is equal to, nine comma three eight moles that's nine point three eight moles okay now what we're saying is that we have to look at how many moles of oxygen we make but if you look at the theoretical calculation you can see that two moles of nh4no3 gives us one mole of oxygen. But we didn't been given two moles, being a 9,38. So to get to that, what do we need to do? We need to divide this by two. So two goes into nine, four times, remainder one. Two goes into 13, six times, remainder one. Two goes into 18, nine times. So we're gonna get 4,69 moles. But that wasn't the question. What was the question? The question was what volume of oxygen gas would we get out? So we know that one mole of gas at STP gives us 22.4 decimeters cubed. But we don't have one mole, we've got what? We've got 4.69 moles. So therefore we're going to multiply that by 22,4 to find the total volume. So we're going to go 4.69 multiplied by 22.4 equals 105.056, but remember, always remember that we are rounding off to two decimal places, so that becomes 105.06. So that becomes 105,06 decimeters cubed. So the final answer is, if we use 750 grams, Okay, if we use 750 grams of ammonium nitrate, what is the volume of oxygen that we produce? We produce 105.06 decimeters cubed, which is huge. It is a huge amount. Right, let's move on to the next question. It says, sodium azide is sometimes used in airbags. So sodium azide is a gas 
And what happens is that when you have an accident, it is triggered and it has the following reaction. It was incredibly fast, okay? The sodium azide, it says it's a solid, but it's actually, it's interesting, it's actually a white powder. And when it reacts, it forms sodium and again solid, but in the form of powder, plus nitrogen gas. So the thing that fills up the airbag is obviously the nitrogen gas. And then often you will see a white powder once it's done. And that is the, 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 the sodium powder that's been given off or produced by the fact that it's been given, that it's exploded. Okay. Now it says if 55 grams of sodium azide is used, what volume of nitrogen gas could we expect to produce. So again, we're looking at the exactly the same type of question. We need to convert this into moles, then do a mole ratio, find the number of moles of this, and then convert that into volume. So let's do that straight away. Okay, so we're going to look at the number of moles of sodium azide. So the number of mol the molar mass of sodium azide, NaN3, is equal to the molar mass of sodium, which is 23, plus 3 times the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14, which is 23 plus 4 threes are 12, 3 ones are 342, which is going to be 65 grams per mole. Now we want to find out the number of moles. The number of moles is going to be 55 divided by 65. So let's go find that out. So it's 55 divided by 65 equals 0,85. That's 0,85 moles, okay? But now we need to look at the mole ratio. And I think this is why this question sometimes gets people a little bit confused. It's because of this mole ratio, because it's two moles of sodium azide reacts to form three moles of nitrogen, okay? So do you agree that it's easiest to then look at it and say, well, then one mole, if we divide this by two and divide this by two, then we can see that at one mole of sodium azide forms 1,5 moles of nitrogen gas, right? But we don't have one mole, we've got 0 0.5 moles. So do you agree that I could then go, well, if that's the case, I can multiply this by 0.85 and I can also multiply this by 0.85. So that means that 0.85 moles of sodium azide is going to result in 1,5 multiplied by 0.85 moles of nitrogen. So let's put that in our calculator. So we've got 1.5 multiplied by 0.85 And that gives us 1,28. So that gives us 1,28 moles of nitrogen. Okay, 1.28 moles of nitrogen. But now, what did they ask? They didn't ask for moles, they asked for volume. So the volume, again, is 1 mole is 22.4 decimeters cubed. So therefore, it's going to be 1,28 multiplied by 22,4. So let's get out a calculator and go 1.28 multiplied by 22.4 equals 28.67. So that is going to be 28,67 decimeters cubed. There we go. Right, and that's as far as we're going today, grade 11s. Please join me again on Thursday and we'll carry on with our science. Have a great day.